Hello guys, it's September and this is another month with great 3ds Max news. And we start very strong because we had a new 3ds Max update, Max 2023.2, it's finally here. And the start of this new version is the new array modifier for a full non-destructive modeling and also animation capabilities inside 3ds Max. It's really powerful, supports mesh, polygons and splines and has multiple methods with different sub-methods. Generally, we have four big methods that is grid, radial, spline, and surface. Inside grid, you can array your object in 1D, 2D, 3D, with three different methods, that is total dimension, relative offset, and fill. Inside fill, you can use packing, where if you have multiple elements, will automatically offset each element according to his bounding box. For example, grid of these books, these books, they have different dimensions, they will be all offset accordingly to the dimension of each specific book. For Radial, you have a lot of options as well. You have 3D cylindrical coordinates with equidistance packing if needed. And a spline allows you to pick a spline to be used as a distribution method with count, relative offset, fill, knobs, and segments with four different methods to choose out of a spline. So when the spline finish, it can stop or continue or do different stuff. You have also the ability to project these objects into a surface, acquiring normals for the orientation. Surface has three methods to distribute over vertex, face center, and edge center. And this is not all. You have multiple options to work with individual elements to transform the array based on multiple factors to create all types of patterns. Multiple options for randomizations, options to change IDs, options to clone ID UV data, ideal to be used together with OSL to offset randomly UVs, colors, or materials. You have options to remove random elements on the array or to cool elements with another object volume. And finally, you can export your array as instance if needed. And because all this is in a modifier, you can create an array of arrays, add pen modifiers or add any type of transformations on the stack modifier itself. The array modifier is unlike any other modifier. has been built over a totally new geometry processing engine. It's called M and Mesh 2 has been built for performance, stability, flexibility, and scalability. And it's a foundation for the future of 3ds Max working with meshes. Array is the first practical implementation of this tech inside 3ds Max, but you will see M and Mesh 2 in other modifiers over the time. But we not only had this new and amazing array, we finally had some animation progress. And that's pretty cool because it has been some time without uh, any change on animation. Lots of fixes and improvements on track view, like auto zoom, interactive update and sync, cursor time states now persist between sessions, the mini curved editor now frames the timeline correctly when opened, and multiple defaults changed by user request. CAD received multiple bug fixes, as well different bug fixes on a skin modifier. Delta Mesh Operator has been updated to use an improved algorithm and more stuff. You can check all the improvements on the cool 3ds Max unofficial What's New from Chang Soe Un. Something that I don't see mention enough is that we had as well important performance on poly to mesh conversions, and this is important because it's making it more efficient on multi threading. You should see about 40% improvement on modifier performance on some modifiers, 35% faster speed in viewport, and 10% faster speed with rendering, because when we are doing the conversion to mesh, you need to do it every time that you render, this will be around 10% faster at render time. Improvements as well on mesh smooth, improvements that will speed up your workflows in 3ds Max. On modeling, we had some improvements. The new triangulation algorithm introduced on the last update has been implemented as well on editable poly. Chamfer, or beloved one, got a new limit effect output to prevent self-intersections. Also, improvements on surface normals when working with non-explicit normals on chamfer. And we get other improvements on symmetry, vertex pane, and heat test detections. New preset has been introduced to convert physical materials into GLTF, on rendering, the Render Setup UI now remembers the last use tab for this Max session. That is a small thing, but uh, it makes my life easier. There is added support for custom hotkeys to toggle active shape in viewport, and Material Editor UI will remember the state of open and close rollups. It's important to mention that some users had problems when loading all the scenes on Max 2023.2. The problem was on the changes introduced on chamfer modifier, 
Max developers launch a hotfix that is 2023.2.2, and this will fix this important problem. So if you had any problem, please update to the new hotfix. It will fix uh, the loading problems. And again, these are only some of the news on this update. But for a complete list, make sure to read Shang Tso Eun, an official 3ds Max watch new. Shang Tso also created most of the videos that you can see in the background. And also from Shang Tso, he created CS Array Maker. It's a very simple to use a script that makes full use of the new array modifier, creating some interesting patterns as you can see here. As well from Shang Tso, if you want to learn more possibilities with the array modifier, download the 3ds Max Array Sample Pack with multiple 3ds Max files showcasing some clever examples done with this new modifier. I also created two tutorials for my patrons that you will get in Patreon. Uh, one is covering the tool itself, Array Modifier, with multiple scene files to download, like the ones that you can see here on the background. And the other tutorial is focused on possibilities that we have with OSL to changes and variations on the color, material, or UVs on these array elements. Render Stacks is now two years old. This popular render manager for 3ds Max, made by Chang So, received some improvements and bug fixes with version 2.52. And you can see on RenderStack's website an interview with Ignacio Muller to celebrate the two years' anniversary that it's a Barcelona artist that is working in Japan and explains why RenderStack is his favorite render manager in 3ds Max. Miao released another script, Select by Visibility. It allows to select objects visible on viewport, objects that cannot be seen because are behind other objects, and way more options that are very useful when you need to reduce your scene with objects that you don't maybe see from your camera. The script costs 5 euros. Sivas announced Final Render Drop 6. It's updated to get direct volume rendering. If you use Thinking Particles or Final Fluid, you can render volumes directly without needing to export to VDB first. There is a new material to render fire and smoke based on OpenVDB, a new NVIDIA GPU denoiser that offers temporal denoising, and you can also get Final Render for free with these new features. 3D R&D offer a free script that will search the file for identical materials and list them out to make it easy to unify similar materials together. An interesting news is that Epic and Autodesk are joining forces with a new collaboration. They aim to accelerate immersive real-time experiences across industries, starting with architecture, engineering, and construction. The first benefit is that Autodesk Revit users will get a free access to Epic Tools Twinmotion. They announced that in the future they plan to develop experience for customers in media and entertainment. Media and entertainment is a division where 3ds Max belongs, so we can understand that in the future 3ds Max will get some of these benefits. A mad mamita showcased on a stack group in Facebook a script that he's working on to help create feather rigs. It's really interesting and I will let you know if he finally releases it to the public. So far it's only showcasing what it can do. Corona Render did a sneak peek for Corona 9, and looks like a lot of the new features that we saw on V-Ray 6 will make it in Corona as well. You can see that we have procedural clouds, Corona pattern, and way more. And our favorite section 3ds Max is only for RGB. Ivan Rastrigin showcased his work in progress for a Star Atlas concept. Star Atlas is a new strategy video game. He modeled it in 3ds Max and textures are done in Medium by Adobe. Monroe's Edmonds showcased a photogrammetry scan from a dinosaur aimed for real-time engines. It was scanned using a Nikon D850, all the images were processed in Lightroom, and using Epic Games Reality Capture to create the 3D model. Then this scan geometry was processed in 3ds Max using the retopology modifier and using the ungrab tools in 3ds Max for the new UV layouts. Monroe said in a stack group that after trying other softwares like Z-Remesher, Dynamesh, and others, 3ds Max Retopology was the most accurate for this work. And yeah, I can relate. 3ds Max Retopology, I have been using it and it's awesome. I don't know if any of you is using it, but I think it's a great piece of software. And we have a lot of Lord of the Rings. Omar Fernandez showcased his work on environments at ILM for Rings of Power in Episode 3. As he points out on a stack, he used 3ds Max, V-Ray, and a lot of 3Planner maps to achieve the final result. We have as well Leo Tai Lens showcasing one of his environments, done in 8 weeks. Uh, he was starting from a low-res previous scene, he up res and sculpted the mountains with a lot of 3Planner maps as well. The work was done in ILM. And we have the work from a 
Stefan Hampel. He's as well a generalist at ILM, but this time it's a personal project, so it was not done commercially. It's inspired by Minus Tirith, and he used 3ds Max for Spa, Gaia, and rendered it in V-Ray, and you can see a little of the making of a uh, great work. And another artist from ILM, Piotr Tatar. A lot of people from ILM on this 3ds Max is not for art with, and he published his demo reel with a lot of cool shots. Really amazing stuff. He used 3ds Max, V-Ray, ZBrush, Clarice, Photoshop, and Nuke. It's all his work that he has been doing during the last five years at Industry Light and Magic. So cool shots, a lot of great stuff here. And we have Andrew Aberkin, that is a senior art manager at NVIDIA. Maybe sounds familiar because last month we talked about a free script that he published for free, that it was called Assembly Tool, awesome script. And this time he showcased the work that he did with 3ds Max and Omniverse. He used different existing models from some friends and used 3ds Max to do the scene assembly, obviously using his tool, and took him two days to put all this together. Then all this was passed to NVIDIA Omniverse Create, and Create has connectors to bridge with 3ds Max. All original materials were V-Ray materials, but Create can convert automatically these materials to MDL materials. MDL is a material from NVIDIA that collects all the material information. All lighting was done in Omniverse Create, and yeah, you can see the final result that looks very good. And it's a very nice story all put together. And if you want more material, Shang Eun made my life way easier. He created a playlist in YouTube with all the cool projects done in 3ds Max, and it's called Made with 3ds Max. Go check it out because there is already a lot of videos with really awesome stuff done with our favorite tool. I did an interview with Alan McKay talking about YouTube, Typeflow, and some of my career. If you want to know a little more about me, check it out. It's on the Alan McKay website. And yeah, it was really fun to do. And that's all for this month, guys. Thanks a lot to all my Patreons. For my Patreons, this time I put together a series of free tutorials where we did this fried potatoes that falls down on the floor and we have some salt that uh, gets dispersed. This was a question from one of my Patreons. So if you are one of my Patreons, ask me anything. And when I can, I try to do this type of videos. And we finish as well the Tornado tutorial. The Tornado is a series of nine videos covering this project from start to finish. I think really interesting because we cover a lot of things. And it's not only me giving magic numbers to make it work. You will see how I do everything. It's from a starting to finish. I am not cutting anything. It's all the full process and how I think and how I approach uh, different problems as I found them. So yeah, thank you so much. If you like these videos, please give a like, give a comment. Uh, I am missing something. Subscribe, subscribe if you are not subscribed. And uh, thank you so much, guys. See you soon. Bye.